Good evening, everyone. Welcome to LFC Transfer Room. I'm here tonight joined by Carter, Menti and Paul to discuss the latest developments around Liverpool Football Club. We'll be discussing transfers, contracts, fixtures and a lot of other stuff. So uh, be sure to like, subscribe to the channel and obviously leave your comments as well. We'd love to, to, to start a conversation, obviously, to have your comments and to uh take some of them and you know um discuss on the topics that you've you're gonna choose as well so carter how are you tonight mate i'm good i'm good i'm just i'm just recovering from a little little football injury i'm sort of getting into my my chamberlain sort of era where i just get knocks and everything every time so i'm just resting up today to be honest good to hear i i've run on the treadmill today burned 400 calories today that's the best De i can decent. do yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Paul. How are you, mate? I'm doing very well. Oh, hold on. What's... Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Paul. You? I am doing very well. Why well, am I having a double sound here? I'm doing very well. Oh, <laughs> well, it seems to be having some technical issues. Then uh, maybe let me just. Okay, yeah, okay. It's better if you mute yourself until you, you get that fixed, mate. Uh, <laughs> Menti, it seems like we're going to go on to you now. How are you? I'm good, man. Glad to be back, you know. Finally got a good panel, so I'm excited. Yeah, good to have you guys. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, during the international break? Because it feels like, on one hand, you're bored and you want to get Premier League football back. But on the other hand, it's... A lot more peaceful and you don't have to worry about stuff so at least we have that paul all good then can you hear me now yep am i good perfect okay <laughs> you want to share your thoughts on how you're doing tonight or oh yeah I'm, I'm i'm doing well uh the last weekend has been a quite boring no football to watch you know a couple of international games here or there but it's just not the same so i'm just getting ready to start to watch some really good football again and let's hope we can continue with it yeah speaking of international friendlies i'll get to see i'll get to see luis diaz firsthand he plays against romania tomorrow and it's i'm not necessarily ready to see him on the left wing against my national side but <laughs> fortunately it's only a friendly so it can be that bad can it um so yeah, uh, we'll get into our first topic for the evening. Um, lads, I have to say, as any other Liverpool player, I don't really like uh, saying nice stuff about Manchester United and their players, but uh, I think we can all agree that Kobe Mainu is a pretty promising youngster. He's been doing great in a struggling Man United side. However, seeing him get called up to the national uh, side so early made me think... And I'm starting to think, have Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones been overlooked? Uh, because Harvey, still so young, has been an important part of our um, squad for a few seasons now. Curtis Jones, obviously now injured, but I'm just talking in general, rather. Um, he's been our best, or arguably our best uh, midfielder this season. So with them not getting called up and seeing Kobe Mainu get his call up so early, it made me feel that maybe uh, Harvey Elliott and especially Curtis Jones have been overlooked this past few seasons. So, Carter, your thoughts on that? I I think it's it's hard because I think Harvey's going up against so many sort of more talented attacking players. Like you got Cole Palmer, you got Phil Foden, you got Jude Bellingham, who are all going to kind of play the attacking midfielder role. So I think there was, if Jones was fit, I think he would have played. I think he would have gone instead of Kobe. I think that's maybe his position as sort of the second most advanced midfielder next to Rice and Bellingham. But I also think maybe, I don't actually know if he's fit, but I would have maybe say Eze maybe should have gone gone before. I think Eze, Eze is probably a player who was knocking on the door. I think before he had his ACL a year or two ago, I think he was quite close to getting called up. So I think there's quite a few, there's quite a few players that have, that I've missed out, but I think Kobe's just his skill set just kind of fits what England are lacking a bit. Like, I'm not going to compare him to what the Man United fans say, but he is a bit Thiago light. Like, he's very good on the ball. He's a little dribbler. I don't think he's nowhere near as good a passer, but I think he's that nimble guy who can beat a player who doesn't really give the ball away, which is what England miss. 
Yeah, it, it, he seems to fit, especially the the Southgate way of um, of playing football at the moment. Uh, Paul, I know you're a big fan of uh, Curtis Jones. So your thoughts on Mainu getting called up to the England squad and maybe Jones being overlooked? Um, I think it all has to do with the manager because for whatever reason, Southgate insists on playing with two holding midfielders. Um, even though the bulk of the talent in the English team are attacking players, and a lot of people, believe, including myself, believe that Rice is capable enough to be the six. Um, I don't see why Southgate insists on playing two holding midfielders, and that is why um, Henderson is still around the team. And uh, it, it, I can just imagine how difficult it was for Southgate to not pick Calvin Phillips, right? Because he just insists on playing two holding midfielders. So maybe he sees Kobe Menu as more able to play that sixth role compared to the other options. Um, as Carter just mentioned, Eze. Eze is a very talented player, um, but he's no six. He's more a, a 10. So, you know, it's not... in. In Southgate's eyes, they are not like for like. I think this Southgate would have probably tried Trent beside Rice, but then Trent is injured. So I can see um, the minor over over somebody like um, like Harvey. But there are some other selections that kind of baffles me. Because, for example, um, Harry Maguire, I think, is out now for the next game because he picked up an injury. And his replacement is uh, is Rico Lewis. Rico Lewis, I don't think, has played 10 minutes for Man City in the Premier League this year. But yet still, he, he plucked Rico Lewis from the under-21s. And a guy like, say, Gerald Kwanza, yes, he's young, but he has played a lot of meaningful minutes um, in the Premier League. Now, I'm not for one saying that Kwanza should actually start for England, but I'm just comparing him to Rico Lewis. What has Rico Lewis done to warrant selection over a Kwanza? Um, so, you know, it's these kind of inconsistencies that, you know, have critics really question, you know, if Gary Southgate is really up to the, up to the task because his selection and his style of play is just baffling. Um, if you look at how Phil Foden plays for, for City and how he plays for England, it's a totally different setup. You know, in cities, all around the box, you know, inside the box, and you know, creating and taking chances. In man, in um, England setup, it just looked lost. So uh, I don't know. I just believe that the biggest obstacle to England winning anything soon is is the manager. <laughs> That is an interesting point and one that I happen to share as well. Um, good, good thing I'm, good thing we're not English, I guess. So <laughs> it's not going to be our problem for the next few years. Uh, evening, Haler. Good to have you. Good to have you here with us tonight as well. Uh, Menti, your thoughts on Mainu, on Harvey, and on Jones, and maybe Salgate even in this conversation? Um, I agree a lot with what Carter said, like in terms of injuries to like certain players, as well as what Paul said. In terms of manager, but why, why I mainly think that they chose Mano is just because I'm pretty sure Ghana was trying to like poach him to come to their national team. Um, so he's very young, and I think it's just England just securing uh talent for the future. Um, it's a pretty smart move. Um, so I mean, I don't blame him, he's pretty good, he's a very good player. Like, I can't even hate, even though he plays for United, but I think they were just trying to you know throw Ghana out the picture, so it's like just secure him for the future. Uh, good and as far as, yeah, and as far as Southgate. Yeah, I agree with Paul. He's like Greg Bellhalter of the United States. Like, we're not winning nothing. Like, I'm sorry to hate it. You guys have, like, the most talented players, <laughs> but you can't win. Like, how do you lose to a Brazil that's on, like, a six-game losing streak? Like, Brazil's been getting cooked in Copa, and then you get this, like, amazing uh, England squad. And when they lost, I was like, Chilwell sending those crazy crosses, Gallagher passing into ghosts. I was like, yeah, the coach got to. We'll yeah. see, though. Well, we'll see. I think England thing, has the best squad, but coaching-wise, I don't think they win it. Another thing, too, if I just, may just come in one more second here, is most uh, top coaches now are looking for goalkeepers that can, quote-unquote, play with their feet, right? We have a guy like John Stones who play for, for City, who is used to collecting the ball from his goalkeeper and making plays. And 
England has the one goalkeeper in international football who has no clue what to do other than kick the ball downfield. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I was watching the game because I had nothing better to do. And I was about two or three um, occasions I see the ball at Pickford's feet. And there were about two or three passes to, you know, to his left or right. And he just looked up and just kicked the ball straight to the other goalkeeper. And I'm saying, <laughs> what is this? So I just don't get it. You know, I mean, why not give somebody like Ramsey or somebody another to see what they can do? I just don't get this fascination with Pickford. I don't think he's as good as people think he is. I do agree. And one thing that I wanted to, to discuss here as well, I've seen this comment from Haler, and he says, the tactical approach of Southgate is building from the back. Now, to be honest, that is a very interesting point to make, especially when Paul has just been discussing the um, Pickford's, um, um, you know, distribution, let's say. And then you can also mention Harry Maguire, who, with a ball on his feet, is extremely dangerous, but not for the opposition. So then, um, yeah, I, I think Southgate obviously still... It, still is in a, in his job mainly because he has a lot of quality there and um it's 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 going to be difficult for him to get found out um too much but obviously not necessarily our problem um it's just an interesting side topic for tonight um, as well so uh i've seen i've seen this comment as well for um from yeah, I'm not gonna. Pr I'm not going to pronounce that. Um, but I've seen this comment as well, um, which states that uh, Southgate wants to be wants to be the next United manager. I don't think we'll have a huge problem with it. Me personally, I wouldn't have a huge problem with that. But um, you know, it's going to be someone else's problem from now on. Um, okay, moving on because I don't want to be discussing too many too many. Um, things about national sites because I might get found out. We are now going to discuss Trent and Virgil contract situation. Now, they are going to be in their final year of um, of contracts now in the summer of um, 2024. So we've seen some comments from Virgil, which granted he explained um, afterwards that have been taken a bit out of context, in which he said that it really depends on um, us, on the next manager, on the ambition of the club, um, uh, his contract situation, that, that is. So, Carter, I wanted to ask you about Trent, about Virgil, and... <clears throat> I've also just remembered that we do have another player that's going to be in their final year of contract, and that's Mo Salah. So I'm going to throw his name there in the conversation as well. Um, we now have three players. Yeah. I think Trent is a given. They were probably going to give him a contract that's, I mean, a long-term contract, that is. With Virgil and Mo Salah, the situation is a bit more interesting. Now, your thoughts, should we, will we, and how much of an impact will the next manager have on that decision? I think I think it will definitely have a big impact. I think as long as it's not Gareth Southgate or someone like who's not very good, as long as it's a good manager, as long as it's a Nagelsmann, uh, an Amarim, uh, Alonso, I think they will sign. For me, Trent, the most important. You're obviously hearing all the Madrid rumours. I think for him, it'd be great to go to Madrid. I wouldn't want him to, but he'd win everything. He'd probably easily be the greatest right back of all time. But I want him to stay at Liverpool. I think, and as well, I wouldn't get a big contract. Like, I, I'd rather Trent get the money than FSG get the money. Like, I always think I'm player power. Like, I hate when people complain about people getting big contracts. Like, let players get their money. Like, these are people like you and me who are just normal people, not guys who've got billions of pounds and that kind of thing. So I hope Trent, Van Dyke, Salah all get massive contracts. Maybe Salah, Salah's maybe not the longest, but Trent and Van Dyke, I hope they get big, massive contracts. I can't see Van Dyke getting getting that much worse and especially if we with all these managers who like Nagelsmann's played three at the back Amarim's played three at the back Alonso's played three at the back like three and a half Van Dijk's going to have even less work so I think he's going to be future proofed even more like Thiago Silva's being able to play to 41 because he's played in three, three at the back system so I think yeah I'm, I hope they all get big contracts and Allison as well I think is near the end I hope he gets a massive contract yeah I think um, my opinion on on Virgil and Alice I, I or my opinion is that Virgil and Allison are 
probably our best players for from the last four or five seasons. Honestly, I place him even have, uh, ahead of Mo Salah. So I do agree that uh, Virch should get a contract, and that's actu actually a very interesting point you're making with with Thiago Silva. Um, yes, it's it is going to be interesting to see, especially if Xabi Alonso ends up signing for Liverpool to see if we're going to transition maybe slowly to a, to a three at the back. Paul, I'm going to ask you the same question on Trent Virgil Mo contracts and on maybe transitioning to a different system under a new manager or head coach. The only one that gives me a little pause is, is really Mo Salah. Um, obviously, if Salah wants to, to stay, then we should give him a new contract. Under no circumstances should we allow Salah to play um, next year in the last year of his contract and allow him to leave for free. Um, but he has to be committed to stay. And you you are committed by signing a, a contract extension. As it relates to Trent, if it was any th team other than Real Madrid, I would just brush it off. But the one team in world football that has the pull to reach out to any player in world football and get their attention is Madrid, right? And Trent is a Liverpool player, true and true. He's been with the club for all his all his life, right? So if it was a case where it was another Premier League club or somebody in the Bundesliga, like, say, Bayern Munich or so on, I would just brush it off. But if, when you look at that talent at Madrid and what they're lacking, a creative right back. So I could see where it make a ton of sense. And if they come to, tr and plus Madrid pays more money than any other club in football too. So if they come to train and say, hey, we know you're a scouser, but how about 400,000 euros net a year on a five-year contract? Are you going to be passing to, to Bellingham, um, Rodrigo, Vinny Jr.? What's the 16-year-old from Brazil name that scored yesterday? Hendrik, I want to raise them. <laughs> right. It's if he decided to at least explore it, it would be hard for me to criticize him. Right. But I hope it doesn't get to that. And I expect to see Trent sign a new contract. And also, I think we also need to decide as well. Is he going to continue at right back? Are we going to move him into the midfield? So, you know, we can everybody can know exactly where the club is or where the player is. Uh, Verge is going nowhere. I'm not too worried about Verge because one, he's a captain. He is very well settled at Liverpool. He's at that, what is he, 32? Uh, I don't think he can go, he wouldn't be able to go to a team like Madrid because they are not going to sign a player at that age. So there is no better opportunity and no better club for Verge to go at this point in his career. So I have no concerns about Verge. I think he's had a two or three year extension and he deserves it because he can play for another three, four years at this level, especially if we switch to a back three, which I'm not really in favor of, but, you know, we'll see what happens. So I want all of these to be done pretty soon, though. You know, we have more important things to worry about. We don't need to worry about our best players, whether they're, they're staying or, or, or leaving. If Salah decided that he wants to go, then we need to let him go. We don't need to force him to stay, but we need to get a commitment from, from Salah. Because I don't want him to go, but I also believe that if he leaves, he'll be fine as well. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I... I... Forgot to mention it after, um, you know, Carter saying it, and now Paul as well. I do agree with you both, and both, and I feel that a part of me would understand if Trent would move to to Madrid, mainly because in England, mainly um, due to him being a Liverpool player, maybe he doesn't get the respect that he deserves, and you know, people still um, like to slag him off mainly because of his um, of his defensive um, mistakes or you know, whatever. I feel like if he'd move to to Madrid, then probably he would cement himself as you know one of the best, or if not the best center back that we've ever seen. So um, I would definitely understand. But then on the other hand, I always thought he'd be the type of player to end his career here at the club. So it is going to be interesting to see. Honestly, I am not 
famous last words, I'm not very concerned um, with him and Virgil especially. Now with Mo Salah, obviously things are different, but with the thing, things he's been saying in the past few months, I feel like Mo Salah wants to stay as well. Um, Menti, I'm going to ask you the same question then. Uh, your view on the contracts of these three players and um, the impact that the next manager will have on, on this decision. Yeah, um, I agree with Paul and Carter mainly. Um, but Trent, Trent um, I mean, he said he looks up to Gerard, and you know, Gerard throughout his career, he's got, he's been like trying to get poached by Madrid and stuff, but you know, he stuck to his roots. Um, but Madrid is just scary sometimes, just because I mean, like Paul said, they could offer you money. Um, they can literally just make him bigger as a like a brand. He'll get more followers. He'll get more deals. They're just good at it because they're like the biggest soccer club. Um, but I think I think Trent will sign. Um, I think that's what the uh, new sporting director's first objective should be. Uh, for sure, for me, it's Trent um, and Salah. If you look at any of his interviews, like he's like a stat patter. He loves chasing records, so I know he wants to like get a statue at Anfield or something. So I see, I can see him extending. Um, he just wants to beat records, and he's a competitor. Um, so I know he wants to play Champions League as well. So I don't see him going to Saudi Arabia. So I can see him staying for like two years, two more years. And Verge, for sure, going to sign as well. Um, I mean, I just don't see them leaving because in an injury, like everyone was injured mainly of the season, and they're this decent. Um, I don't know. I, I see all of them staying. That's my opinion. It's just yeah, too I agree. Good. It's too good to leave right now. I agree, and it it it, it even feels like um, seeing some of or one of them go, it would be you know off because uh, they'd be like one of those players that uh, were a big big part of 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 the um, of the trophies that we've won in the past in the last few years. Um, it'd be close to what I felt when. Mane went and when Bobby Firmino left as well, but you know, it's starting to happen, so um, it is what it is. Um, moving forward, the next topic that we are going to be discussing is once again Chubby Alonso. Now, um, there's been another, um, another, there's been actually lots of rumors from Germany saying that Bayern are prepared to go and to try and sign him, and they've set sights on him as their next manager now. That comes as no surprise, especially with Bayern being Bayern and, uh, you know, them trying to destabilize the competition that's been things that one thing that's been a constant in Germany. That and them winning trophies, to be fair. Um, so we know Bayern are um, apparently uh, extremely, um, you know, um, they definitely want to go for him. But then... Liverpool does as well. Now, the term that I've been seeing on Twitter is that Liverpool are ready to go to war for Xabi Alonso. When I first saw the announcement that Jurgen was leaving, uh, I thought it it's Xabi Alonso or no one else for me. But since then, I've come, I've been trying to think of other managers, and I wouldn't be Maybe I would be upset if Alonso wouldn't sign for us, but then I think we do have some other interesting names on that list. Carter, is it Chabi Alonso or no one else for you? I think it's difficult. I think in all ways he makes the most sense, but I also have just kind of thought as long as we sign the right players like and we move people on at the right time and we have a top team, we'll be fine. Like that for me is the most important thing is making sure we make the right decisions, keep the right players. But I think going forwards, I at first I was like, oh my god, it's it's over. Even Alonso, I was like, it's not Klopp. But the more and more I've I thought about it, like I think Nagelsmann. I think when you look at all the players he's managed, every player looks so much better under Nagelsmann. He got Lewandowski to like 41, 43 goals in the league in Germany, and I think statistically. He was still great, even the year he got sacked in Germany. For the Germany job, he's got great numbers. Obviously, that's going to be quite easy managing Germany. But I think guys like him, I think Amarim, I was more confident on at the start. But I just feel like because I've never, I've watched maybe one game ever of Sporting Lisbon. Like, I've got no way to really think about it. I think he'd be good. And then for me, the Zerbi is more and more growing on me. Like, I just, I just think he's just a bit nuts. I think his issue is... He's lost his best players. They've got they've got European football, and he's got Lewis Dunk at centre half. 
And I just think if you give him this Liverpool team, his high line, his pressing, his passing, we'd look, we'd look. If Brighton, Brighton had given us troubles, they'd given City trouble, Arsenal troubles. I think if we had someone like the Zerbi with our players, I think it'd be great. So I think the manager's not really the issue. I think it's keeping the star players. As long as we keep, as we previously mentioned, if we keep all those players, you could probably get a decent performance from Gareth Southgate. So I think it's more about keeping the players than the manager at the moment. Damorim is actually one interesting name, and that's a name that I've been uh, also thinking about. I think him would also be my next um, shout. It's him. Nagelsmann and there's someone else who I don't necessarily want to mention because I'll probably get abused from the chat but Thomas Frank as well I, I I like Thomas Frank I think he is good he might be good enough for Liverpool as well now I've I've um, I've mentioned Thomas Frank mainly because I know Paul is going to definitely disagree with that deserve shout I think he's been very vocal about it on the chat as well I've seen him shake his head already so that's um you know, I'm going to give him something else to disagree with. Uh, Paul, your thoughts on the next manager, Xavi Alonso, De Amorim, De Zerbi, Thomas Frank? Well, as we were discussing in the chat earlier today, um, I'm not a huge fan of, of De Zerbi. I, I just see disaster written all over De Zerbi. It's very similar to, to um, Potter to Chelsea. De Zerbi, and I have the same opinion of... Um, and Postacoglu. Their style of football with that high line and that just gongo kind of football, I don't think it suits us right now. Um, especially with, with our captain, 32-33, playing at this halfway line. I, I'm not sure that's what we want right now. If we don't get Zabi, then my top four or my top five in this order is Nagelsmann 2, number three, and this is where I am the only one and this guy here is Gary O'Neill, then Ruben Amarim, and, and Thomas Frank would be number five. Now, Gary O'Neill, of course, he doesn't have the experience with a big club, but there are times when, you know, a young manager just needs a chance. The guy has been pulling up trees with very limited resources and very um, average players at best. He, went, he was at Bournemouth where all of us thought that the club would get relegated and they avoided that very comfortably. Then he was fired for whatever reason I don't know up to this point. Then he went to Wolves for like five minutes before the start of the Premier League season. I think they are like ninth right now in the Premier League and they have gotten some really terrible decisions from VAR. They have lost their best player for most of the season in Pedro Neto. And I just like the guy, the style of football he's playing. Yes, he would be my third choice, but I think he needs, you know, he's a kind of, he's a kind of um, manager that probably just needs a chance. And also, with the kind of backroom staff that we have now with, with Edwards and, and, and co, he will just be able to concentrate and just be the football coach, not to manage Liverpool as a club like, like Klopp did. So... Um, that would be, you know, my 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 choices. Those five. Thomas Frank is okay. I mean, I I, I don't hate him. I, I guess his stock has fallen a little bit over the last couple of weeks as Brentford has been going backwards. But I think he's a decent manager. But I am not on the deserving train at all. I, I I just think it's it's a disaster waiting to happen. But let's hope we don't need to experiment and we get Zabi. But we still have to discuss it because there's you know we're not certain that we get Zabi. But the Zerbi, I would pull up my 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 here even though I don't have any. I don't want the Zerbi. <laughs> You know, I, I've been smiling so much in the past few minutes because I've been thinking. I, I've I've already I'm already thinking seeing this clip on Twitter and you know someone saying who are these clowns, <laughs> saying that Thomas Frank and Gary O'Neill and De Zerbi are managers worthy enough, but we're all in this together, lads. It's good to good to good to have your opinions. And actually, I do like Gary O'Neill as a manager. I just struggle with may maybe thinking if he's experienced enough now to be to be a Liverpool manager. But that's an interesting outside shout. Um, yeah, thanks. but let, let me read about you there, there Mihai. Yeah. That's people are talking about his lack of experience. 
We all agree that the Premier League is the hardest league in football. Right? The guy has managed two teams with low budget and he has they have been punching above their weight. Um, what is Amarim's 39, I think? The Portuguese league is a decent league, but you cannot compare the Portuguese league to the Premier League. So in the Portuguese league, I think Amarim have probably close to the best set of players in that league right now. And I think he's, on, he's doing okay. But I don't buy this argument that O'Neill don't have the experience. He is in the Premier League, which is the toughest league in the world, and he's doing okay. So he's not my first choice, but I think he deserves a shout. Yep, I, I, I do agree with that. Um, thank you to Maharani's Closet uh, for uh, becoming a member of the channel. And thank you for leaving your comments as well. I'm, I, I've been wanting to say, I think uh, this is maybe a bit harsh on the, on the Zerbi, but yeah, I actually, you know, I've been thinking when I saw the Zerbi, um, it is in his first few months as Brighton manager, I've been thinking this guy looks good, you know, the way Brighton are playing. But then you're kind of starting to see more and more of um, um, maybe the things are not working uh, working out as well. Um, so, yeah, it is going to be an interesting decision in the summer if Chabi Alonso um, will not be our manager. Menti, I'm going to ask you as well. Your thoughts on the next manager? Who would you like, and maybe an outside shout to to you know show some um, ah, what's the word to be basically in line with all of us? Um, I say for me, number one choice is Xavi Alonso. Um, and for all these people saying, oh, he's gonna go to Bayern Munich, like why would he go to Bayern Munich after he beats them with a team that's never won the league? That makes no sense. Like he's gonna go. To, if you look at his interviews, he seems like he has a career plan. And he literally said, if it lines up, he'll go to Liverpool, right? It just makes sense. It's just too easy for him. Um, the only difference between Bayern Munich and Liverpool is, like, if you go to Bayern Munich, he's going to win everything. It, it's easy. He got the best players. It's a one-team league. But if he goes to Liverpool, the only difference is just the pressure because the fans are completely different. They Football in England and, I mean, Germans have, you know, great fans. But in terms of pressure – completely different just because now you see three teams that are pretty good um so i think shabby alonso has a tough choice but i don't see him making the, that choice until end of april because if they win out their next five games i think they automatically win just because i think they play 34 games so even though the last three games won't matter because they'll be 10 points ahead um so end of april is when we'll find out if he really wants to come to liverpool um and then second would be nagelsman for me just because, I mean, he's a good coach. I don't know why Byron fired him. Yeah, that, that was probably their downfall. But And in terms of Deservey, I think he is a fraud. You're not going to convince me he's a good coach. Like, I just Googled his coaching history. 2016, he uh, coached a Serie A team, Palmario. They lost seven in a row. Didn't score a single point at home. Get sacked. Then he goes to another Serie A team in 2017, Benevento. Um I mean, they were terrible. They got relegated, and yet they're praising his playing style. Okay, he has a good playing style, but they're not winning. Then he goes to Sassuolo, and he literally back-to-back -back eighth place in Serie A. The only thing they're talking about, oh, he has a good playing style. I mean, he's not a winner. Like, I guess that one season with Brighton, he was, like, amazing. His playing style worked. He might have slightly overachieved, um, but when his players got injured, like, you still should be able to manage at a high level in the Premier League. And then you could see the difference. He's just getting cooked by every team. Um, but, yeah, I want him nowhere near the club. I think he's a fraud. Like, you can't have two teams relegated in Serie A. I mean, three months without scoring a, a point at home. Imagine at Anfield. Imagine that. No. It, 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 this is the evening of hot takes, so make sure to like <laughs> uh, to like the like the video, show some support mainly because these are facts. Though the thing is, you guys could Google his coaching history, go look at mm -hmm. it, and you tell me if he's a good coach. Like, so, Minty, what about what about my guy Gary O'Neill? No love for him. I mean, honestly, I mean, I don't know. I don't watch a lot of his matches, so I can't give you a good opinion. Uh, I mean, I'll take your word for it. Um, but I mean, you could see a lot of pundits saying, you know, he's a good coach. They're doing pretty well, but, um, if I had to choose someone, it'd 
it could be Gary O'Neill or Almiron. Just because I know Almiron's good with developing players, so that's my shout. So, all right. One interesting point that I've seen um, in the comments is something that we've been discussing in the last few streams as well. Um, the interesting thing is, or an uh, Maybe an interesting thing for Chabi Alonso is that if he'd end up signing for Liverpool, he'd have a bit more support from the from the fan base. Now we know he has already he already has a relationship with the fan base, um, as he was a, a Liverpool player and a very good Liverpool player. We have um, really obviously um, great memories of him in a Liverpool shirt. So we, as a fan base, I assume people are going to be a lot more patient with him than any other manager that ends up signing. So um, that's another reason why um, he'd be probably the best fit there is. I've also seen this in the chat, and I wanted to ask you guys as well. Uh, Haylor asks if um, this... FSG thing going global, they're probably going to acquire now a second club from what we've seen from reports. Um, is that going to have an effect on the next manager that we that we signed? Menti, I'm going to start off with you. Nah, if you acquire a second club, um, I don't think like the Liverpool manager should have an effect on it. I think in terms of they might have like similar styles, similar philosophies and ideas in terms of the way they play, like if you look at City and then uh, Granoa in Serie A, like that coach over there plays like attacking football, um, slightly similar to Pep, not Pep, but pretty good. Um, but I don't see a correlation in terms of uh, it affecting coaches. We also seem to have a Gareth Southgate fan here in the chat. Uh. I assume this is uh, this is banter at this point. Uh, Carter, your thoughts on um, on what Haylor asked. Personally, um, the more I thought about it, the more I'm kind of disappointed at Liverpool as a club buying another team. I think it's quite horrible. I think it's quite anti-Liverpool. I think fair enough. I'm not going to say the, the Americans are Canadians. I'm, if we bought an MLS franchise, fair enough. Not saying they're not real teams, but they're not teams that have been around for 150 years or big parts of the community. Like that you can just develop, we could develop a team in Las Vegas maybe or somewhere else but i think if we went and bought like imagine we all supported a team in the south of belgium and they were just like yeah you're just a feeder club now this is this is it you're just players out on loan like you're just going to be imagine that like all the time your best players there for one year like you'd much rather just be a normal team i think it's quite i understand i completely understand like bringing players in and stuff but i actually the more i thought about it, i just think it's quite like anti-liverpool like i think it's quite like a city like, not saying we're becoming like City, but I look at City as a bit of a, maybe not a clean club, a bit of a dirty club with like a shadow over them. And I think I want to maybe stay as far away from that as possible, to be honest. I do agree with that. And um, it is a conversation that we probably need to have as well. Um, I just feel like so many things have happened, um, you know, in the last, let's say, 15 years in football then that this is starting to become the norm now so um i'm not a big fan of it either um <laughs> but it's probably going to happen um we we can like it we can, we either like it or not it it is probably going to happen um paul do you think that maybe fsg acquiring the second club will have an impact on their next manager i doubt it very much um Liverpool's part is one change, which is to win the Premier League and to compete in Europe. The next manager will have his hands full with those priorities. I don't think it would be sensible, it would be smart to have our manager, whoever that person be, to be worrying about um, a club in the MLS or a club in Belgium or wherever it is. There will be a separate team of people that will be managing those and scouts will be around, you know, separate who are watching these games, hiring these players. And the standout player here or there, you know, will be probably brought to the attention of the manager. But I don't think it will affect um, anything at all. Our priorities is just to win the Premier League and to compete in Europe. I don't think that will change. And it should not change. 
All right. Um, one other question that I wanted to answer. I've seen this in the chat. Um, I think by the name that is a Hungarian fan that's asking this question. Why does Dom hate all LFC YouTubers? My main, I haven't seen the quote, so I don't know anything about that. But I am guessing that there are quite a few um, YouTubers who run their channels based on, you know, they're just going to say stuff that gets the most clicks. And uh, we know there are people who um, have other uh, Liverpool uh, uh, channels where they're just spewing hate and slanging off players after every bad performance. So... You know, it's probably something in, in something regarding that. Um, so yeah, um, here at LFC Transfer Room, from what I'd like to believe at least, we don't really do stuff like that. We are not going to, uh, you, you know, stag off players based based on one two bad performances. We are here to have um, constructive um, um, conversations around the club and uh, its players as well. So. Um, yeah, I haven't seen anything about the dumb quote, so I don't know anything anything about it. But if he said it, I'm guessing he probably refers to 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 those people. Um, okay, we are now going to move forward, and I wanted to ask you guys about Coop Miners from Atalanta, who has been linked to Liverpool in the past few past few days. Not necessarily from the most reliable source, Sis, but um, he has still been being linked with our club. Now, he is a center midfield, midfielder, mainly an 8, more of a 10 sometimes. It depends. He's been extremely consistent for, for Atalanta in the past few seasons, so um, I can see why we'd be interested. But then at the same time, another center mid, I don't feel like we necessarily need that Carter. So I'm going to ask you, do we need a center mid? Do we need someone like Coop Miners? Um, and would you want him in? So, so actually, so actually, because I used to watch like a lot of football podcasts and stuff. When he was at AZ Alkmaar, he played center half, six. He played a lot of center half, a lot of six, a lot of eight, a lot of ten. He's a really big set piece threat. But ultimately, I don't think we need that. I think he's a really, I think he's a good player. I think a bit like, I don't, don't hate me guys. I think a bit like McAllister where I think yes, I they can be, say that. they can be quite good, but I think mm -hmm. that athleticism holds them back mm -hmm. a bit from being like truly well beta type players. Mm -hmm. Like guys like Sobosly and I'm going to say Bashetic have a lot more like physically going for them, which can make it like some, sometimes you're going to play other top players and if you're a bit bigger and quicker than them, it's going to help. And I think I just couldn't see, I just don't think that works with him. I think he's a bit too slow. I think you could maybe get away with him like we had Macker at the six, but I don't, I feel like that's a waste. I'd rather get more of a specialist. So I think he's a really, a really good player. I'd like to see him in the Premier League. I think he'll be exciting. I also think he'll be one of those players where he'll score two free kicks and everyone will be, oh, we should have signed him. We should have signed him, that type of thing. But I, I think he's just a good, he's just a tidy little player. And I, I hope, I just more for my own thing as like a football fan, I think he'd be a good addition to the league, but maybe just not for us. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do agree. Um, interesting seeing this. Now, if you think we're chatting absolute bollocks, you should have seen us 20 minutes ago. But um, <laughs> good, good, good to have the comments in. Good to have the comments in. Um, yeah, Paul, I'm going to ask you the same. Now, Cope Miners has expressed his uh, wish to basically leave Atalanta this this summer so he is most likely going to move he prefers to move to Juventus but the reason why we have an edge on them apparently is that Juventus don't really want to splash the cash this summer and um, obviously they don't really have a lot of um, um, of money as they haven't been in Europe uh, last season either so your thoughts on Cope Miners is he a Liverpool player no nah. He is a decent player, I, and I agree with Carter. I was just about to say the same thing. He is basically a left-footed um, Maka, but just not as good and slower. And Maka is by no means a speedster. It's good on penalties. We don't need that. We have enough guys who can take them. Uh, he is decent at set piece. And again, we really don't need him. And also, even though we, we do need reinforcements, I don't think... The midfield, especially at number eight, is where we're looking for right now. You know, so I think he's like two years late. So I, I think that we're only just below over because we don't need him. And is he a six? I don't think he can play the six for us. He's not an upgrade over Endo 
other than being a few years younger. So he's Dutch, so he's supposed to be technically gifted, but he's just too small and slow um, for the type of football that we play. So I don't think there's anything there. I, I think they're just using this attachment to Liverpool to try and get a better deal somewhere, <laughs> you know. So th that's all there is to it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised by that either, to be honest. Um, Menti, do we really need another center mid? Now, we do seem to have options like never before, and uh, especially with our youngsters, especially with some of the youngsters that we've seen this season in uh, McConnell and Clark and Bajetic now coming back, we'd expect them to see maybe get some more minutes. So then it doesn't really make sense for us to get another one. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think we need another one, but that's a choice for our next manager. That's that's his problem, so that's a good problem to have. But um, what's this guy's name? I don't know how to say his name, the the Dutch player. Cool Miners. Cool Miners. Yo, I don't even think he's the best midfielder on the team. Like, I like uh, I watched one Atlanta game. Um, there was like a, a Brazilian. Ed Ederson. Ederson. That guy is – I'm not going to lie. He was pretty good when I watched it. I've, like, never watched it, but I watched their recent um, – Europa match, I was like, yo, this guy's pretty decent. Like, I could see Ederson likely being better for our team rather than him. Um, but I think the other guy is just, you know, Pep is, uh, Pep Linders is Dutch, so we're connected to every Dutch player ever. That's going to stop after the next manager. Um, but I think he's going to end up at Juventus. But, um, yeah, but Ederson, for sure, he's a better midfielder for my eyes. Yeah, plus, if we were looking for a, a defensive midfielder, in that 30 million euro price range don't forget that there's andre still out there so he would be a far better option than, than um coop miners one he's much younger he's more energetic and he's more defensively sound um and he's and he's in and around the brazilian team which just tells you that he guy has quality so and he's out there for the same money or cheaper and with command a much lower um salary so if we are looking for defensive reinforcement, Coop, Coop Miners would not be on the list of players we're looking at right now. Yeah, and we probably end up getting Andre for a lot cheaper now. Flamengo seems to be uh, desperate yeah. on, in, in getting rid of him now. They can't seem to get any offers. And also, I think we've had a pretty good six, a Brazilian six in the past few seasons, if I if I remember correctly. So um, it's not <laughs> yeah. necessarily a bad... Um, He's only 24. Sorry? He's pretty good. The Ederson player? I, I literally watched one match and I was like, yo, who is this guy? And I was like, oh, he's two years younger than the Dutch dude. Um, It's pretty technical as well. So, And he played want... he like 25 matches, so he's always healthy, no injury problems. I want to ask you guys this. Um, Newcastle running into financial problems has been reported, so they will need to sell some players. Um, what are you know. guys thinking about? I already about? know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Bruno G. Bruno Guimaraes, yeah. yeah. Um, very, very interesting player, isn't he? I think he, he he is someone that I would like, to be honest. But then, I, I'll, I'll, yeah, I always thought he's, he's going to be way too expensive. But now, if they have some financial problems, then who knows? Um, that's, that is going to be an interesting topic, maybe, maybe for closer to the summer. Um, up until then... Um, we are going to move forward a bit and we are going to discuss the fixtures that we are going to have in late April. Now, with the latest developments, our fixtures for late April are as it is. We're going to play Atalanta on the 18th of April. Two days later, so on the 21st, we're going to play Fulham in the Premier League. Two days later, we're going to play Everton in the Premier League at 8 p.m., and then that's on a Wednesday. And then on Saturday at 12.30, we're going to play West Ham. So two days in between uh, all of these four matches, so that's like four in nine or ten days. I have absolutely no idea who uh, who thinks of these schedules and, uh, you know, how do they look at it and seem to think, yeah, that, that's good, good process, boys, good process. You know, that that's fairly familiar. Uh, so, Carter, your thoughts on that. How do we keep 
ending up in these situations because it's starting to like i've never said anything about corruption on any of these live streams but at this point it's starting to get a bit suspicious i know what you mean it's 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 not easy man it but the liverpool way it's never easy so i think that's part of it but i also think if arsenal beat by munich we play west ham on the sunday instead of the saturday so a big bonus for us would be if arsenal go through we get an extra day but i think it's it's going to be difficult i'm just glad we've got all the players coming back like to be honest we need to try and get those those chamber things off lebron because people are going to need proper recovery they're going to need massages <laughs> they're going to need like everything because like Klopp is going to bleed some of these guys dry. Like I think Harvey Elliott, honestly, Harvey Elliott must have played more football in the last 12 weeks than he has for Liverpool. Like um, he actually played 90 minutes, 120 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes. Like he's actually running these guys into the ground. Like I think it's good that there's a lot of guys coming back, like Trent's coming back, like Jones coming back, Jota, Bashatic, Gravenberg. But oh my, like some of these players like... Van Dijk's just going to be playing 90 minutes every two days. Like, it's going to be ridiculous. So, I feel I feel a bit sorry for the players, but I think I think we'll cope. But, yeah, we it would be good if we had a few more days in between the games. Yeah, at this rate, we've been... You know, players are joking about stuff like this because they see themselves more than they see their families. But uh, at this point, I think Verge is going to see more of Michael Oliver than he's going to see his wife in, the, in those 10, 12 days. So, it is going to be uh, an interesting time. The only thing that I can say is that I'm extremely glad that this happens now when we actually seem to have some options. Because if this would have happened in, let's say, 2018, where we still played the same th midfield of three players, and then the, the fourth one would be Milner, who's 48, coming from the bench, then it would, be, it would have been a lot more difficult. So, Paul, your thoughts on the fixture congestion. How are we going to navigate that? And... If we, let's say we get those three wins in the Premier League, where does that leave us? You know, I have a little bit of sympathy with the, um, the schedule makers because there's a lot of competitions that um, are being played. Um, and there is a time by which everything has to be completed. Like for the Premier League, for example, the, the final day of the season where every team has to play that date is set in stone. So all the other 37 games has to be completed before the final day. <clears throat> so so it, it's really tough. And with um, especially for the teams that are played in Europe. So, you know, I, I try not to complain about it because if you're going to say we should not be playing at that particular date, then you have to come up with a better solution. So it, it, it's tough. The good thing is um, for once we have a, a decent enough squad. And not only in terms of the numbers, but in terms of the quality that we have off the bench, you know. So we should be able to to, to manage, to navigate, as long as we don't get too many more, more injuries. Because I think I'm correct in saying, other than Matip and Thiago, if I can say his name, <laughs> everybody should be back, <laughs> should be back in contention um, a week or two after the break. Not sure about Allison though. I've not been hearing anything about Allison, so I'm not sure what's happening with him. So if we get all our guys back, because if we have to play a couple of games with Gravenberg starting or um, some of the couple of the young guys, if if Bachete come back and can play, you know, 60 minutes here or there, Bobby Clark, Curtis Jones, you know, we can afford to give uh, Maka, Endo, uh, and Sabasly some minutes. You know, we may have to try Trent in midfield you know because we have a lot of games so i'm not too i'm not too i wouldn't go as far as saying it's corrupt because as i said these games have to be played so the, the important thing is as long as we win then i don't care right if if we don't win then we'll all find excuses and try to blame somebody but it is what it is because these games just have to be played. And furthermore, I prefer to be watching a game that the city are like today doing nothing. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, interesting point about um, as long as we win, we're happy. I've had this, yeah. this this chat with Kings as well after the United game, I think, on the following day. Uh, we both agree that the EFL Cup is a lot more fun than the FA Cup anyway. So that's that's obviously... That, that that's 
adds to your point as well. So, um, Menti, how are we going to get through that? And uh, your thoughts on maybe playing Trent now that I've now that Paul has mentioned it. It is going to be interesting to see. If we see Trent in midfield, then we can play Bradley on the right, which would maybe give us a bit more defensive stability. Um, your thoughts on it? Honestly, I don't know. That, that That's just up to Klopp. I, I still see him as right back. Um, I know he's in interviews just saying, oh, I want to play in the midfield. But um, I completely agree with what uh, Carter and Paul said about all of them coming back. But the way I look at it now is like, all these players in their head are going to play well just because they're, they're basically auditioning for the next manager. The, like, how you perform now actually kind of matters for these guys. I know they're thinking in their head. Like, they got to start putting good performances. Um, and if they bring the title home, that would be great for us. But um, as a player, I personally think they are already like, am I going to play next year? I got to play well this game. I got to do this. So I think it's just only better for us as fans just because everyone coming back um, good competition. Uh, I think we'll be able to get through it. Um, yeah. Um, and Trent, honestly, I would just ease Trent into it. I wouldn't rush it or anything. Like, Trent's so good. Like, no matter what, he's going to get into the team. So, like, the new manager doesn't matter for, like, certain players. Like, the untouchables. Trent's one of them. Uh, for him, I would just, you know, ease. But for players like Gakpo, Lucho, like, anyone is, like, no one is, like, safe i guess because if what if the next manager prefers to play like a one at, in the top and two behind with tens we don't know but um i think it's good for us um and i think it's good for the players as well they just got to step it up it's just their audition that's how i look at it um good point indeed about some of the players that are going to come back so yeah paul to answer your question because i haven't um i think Indeed, from what I've seen um, as well, everyone is going to be back. The latest for the United game, um, but that's going to be like two weeks after the, the Brighton. So we have Brighton on Sunday on the 31st, and then um, obviously pretty much everyone is said to be back by the time we're going to uh, go to Old Trafford. So yeah it is going to be an intense few weeks uh, but as carter said it's never going to be easy when you're a liverpool fan and when you're a liverpool football club rather so uh, i think it's maybe the easiest for us the fans because uh, i can't imagine what it is for the players to play every two days and especially the maybe the emotional the psychological side of things um it is a lot to go through but um Indeed, in the end, it's it's what the what football is all about. So, on that note, philosophical note rather, um, we are going to end uh, tonight tonight's live stream. Thank you very much to everyone who liked, subscribed, who commented, who's been here tonight. Thank you very much to Carter, to Paul, to Menti uh, for them. Um, it's good to see you guys, and uh, hopefully, we get to do this um, in the next few weeks as well. To everyone else, uh, stay tuned um, to the channel. Tune in every day at 7.30. And um, we do have live streams after the matches as well. So we are going to have post-match streams um, after the games are finished as well. So be sure to subscribe and to come back um, every day. So I hope you guys are going to have a great week. Um, I know I am because I'm going to be off tomorrow as well. Up the Reds. See you guys later.